Hello and welcome, uh, I'm Julien Ponce and this is a free tutorial on Darktable and more precisely I'm going to explain a little bit how Darktable is working with the thumbnails. Now if you use Lightroom you're very familiar with this process, you can import photos into the catalog and then thumbnails will be generated just after that process. It's very similar in Darktable. Uh, here I have a, uh, a very, well I wouldn't say very but it's, it's a pretty big um, collection of photos. This is just a folder I have right now with 415 but actually my catalog uh, if I look at uh, all the folders uh, I have pretty much 23,000 photos imported so it is quite a lot. Now when uh, let me show you just the one I have just before because okay 415 that's it. Now when I scroll down and scroll up you can see all the thumbnails they are already generated and it's very quick but this process is actually a bit different than Lightroom and I, I would say it's not as efficient because when you import a folder in Darktable, not all the thumbnails are generated by default. You have actually to scroll and have a look at them. Uh, basically, if they are not displayed in the Lighttable module, the thumbnails won't be generated. So if you import like 3000 photos and you want to have all of them generated as a thumbnail, well, you have to scroll down until they're all generated, you have to display them in the light table module. Now, if I have like a 10,000 photos and I want to be able to look at all the thumbnails, I'm not going to scroll down until all of them are generated. I want to automate that process so I can do something else while the, the thumbnails are generated. And you can do that in, in Lightroom because Lightroom will do it in the background for you. And in Darktable, it's not possible by default. And this tutorial is to show you how you can actually do it. So let's just import a new folder and I'm going to import skies and click open. Now you can see all the photos are imported. If I look at the taskbar down below, I have this progress bar in the Windows version. Uh, I use also the Linux version, but for this tutorial and because the alpha version is out now for Windows, which is great, uh, I'm using the Windows version because it's more convenient for me. Um, at the end, when the progress bar will reach the, uh, will reach the, the end, you can see Darktable will uh, generate the thumbnails, but not in the way I'm expecting to. So now it's finished. That's it. And now you can see all the thumbnails are generated, but it is generating the thumbnails of all the photos that are in the light table right now. So let me just wait a couple of seconds and you will see what I mean when I say it's not automatically doing it for me. Now that's it. In this screen, all the thumbnails are generated. Now let's scroll down and as you can see, I have to scroll down to actually tell Darktable I want to see all these uh, photos. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna to start uh, generating thumbnails. It's not very practical because I have to go and scroll and scroll or I can do the unzoom so I have more photos to generate. But it is a manual process. It's not automatic. It's, it's not going to generate all the thumbnails in the background for me. Well, actually, there is a way to do this uh, with a separate binary. Now, if I go to uh, the uh, Darktable binary, so um, in Windows, it will be program files, Darktable, then bin. Um, it also depends where it is going to be installed on your Linux distribution and on the Mac. So I can't really tell uh, for all the possibilities here. So let's just assume uh, you know already where Darktable is installed for you, but where you have your Darktable binary, you will have also Darktable uh, dash generate dash uh, cache. And then what it's going to do, it's going to process the default DB, the default database, which is uh, usually in your uh, profile. I'm going to show you also where the files are going to be generated, but by default, it's going to take the catalog and generate all the photos that don't have a thumbnail. So right now I actually have all the thumbnails generated. So if I launch it, um, basically it's going to process all the photos and see everything is already generated. So just for the purpose of the demonstration, let's import a new folder and I'm going to shut down that table just after this. So my thumbnails are not generated. So let's click open and let's just process the, uh, the import. And when it's going to start generating thumbnails, I'm just going to shut it down. All right, okay, it's generating a thumbnail. Let's just close it. So we know for sure some photos in our catalog don't have thumbnails. So let's drop 
the uh, dot table generate cache binary into the uh, terminal and launch the, the binary. So now you can see all the photos that have a thumbnail. Well, they are very quick uh, because well, it's already generated, so there's nothing to do. And at the end, way at the end, around 23,000 something, well, Darktable is going to notice I have new photos that don't have a thumbnail. And it's going to generate them for me in the background so I can do something else. This is exactly what Lightroom is doing by default, but Darktable is not doing it by default. And let's say when I um, shoot in the trip, when I'm outside, when I have or a fashion shoot uh, in a studio, basically at the end of the day, I come back with thousands of photos and I want all of them to have thumbnail, right? Because you want to, you want to be able to see them uh, in a thumbnail. So what I do is just I import all my photos and then I launch this process. I do something else, do whatever you want, and then you come back when it's finished. Okay, so we just finished uh, with the, uh, the process. Let's launch Darktable and see if that last folder contains all the thumbnails. And that's it. Now we can scroll down and you can see all the thumbnails are generated Although just before, well, these thumbnails uh, were not present. So that binary generated all the thumbnails for me in the background without even uh, having to wait or having to uh, do it manually by scrolling down or up in the light table module. So that's cool. Now we have generated all the thumbnails of the catalog. Now this binary is going to generate all the thumbnails of all the photos in the catalog. So if you import like thousand and thousand of them, well, you're going to have to wait a tiny bit. Now, you may be wondering where the files are going to be stored because they must be somewhere on the hard drive. And well, actually, you're right. They are somewhere in the, on the hard drive. So on Linux and Mac, it's going to be in your uh, user profile. So something like home forward slash your profile forward slash dot cache forward slash dart table. Obviously, this is not going to work on Windows, but this is the default. Oops, sorry. This is not uh, going to work on Windows, but this is and uh, the uh, default folder for Linux and Mac. Now I found it on Windows and it's actually not where I expected to. Uh, so it's in the, uh, the, the profile, uh, user profile, app data, which is uh, very, uh, it's very common to find uh, preferences of application in there, local, but I was expecting to be in local then dark table because we, we already have a dark table folder in the uh, app data and you can see here I can find the preferences, I can find my different styles, uh, which is useful if you want to back them. And then uh, you have library.db. This is the catalog. This is where uh, Dartable is going to find the database and all the photos. Not, not physically, not all the files of the photos, because as you know, it's a catalog, it's a database. It doesn't contain the photos, it references them uh, wherever they are on the hard drive. So this is a very important file. So if you want to, to do a backup, this is uh, where you want to look. But there is no trace of my thumbnails. And what if I want to do a backup? What if I want to put them on a separate hard drive because I don't want to have them on the system drive? Well, so they are in a data local Microsoft, then they are on Windows, then they are, uh, I completely forgot, Windows init cache. I need cache, whatever you pronounce that. Um, and then dark table, and then MIP maps, dash, and then a very complicated uh, um, name. Uh, it's not even a name, but yeah, it's numbers and letters. And then you will find all the thumbnails all in there. Okay, I can see 23,000 something. So I have some nudes in there. Uh, so because of YouTube, Obviously, I'm just going to hide this. So 23,125 JPEG, very small JPEG, but they're all in there. Now, what if you don't want to store all these files on your system drive because the profile is actually on my C drive? Well, actually not. Uh, I kind of uh, kind of tricked Lightroom, uh, Darktable, sorry. I kind of tricked Darktable into uh, believing that they are on the system drive. But what I did is a symbolic link on a separate hard drive so here are all the files and, and all the thumbnails. They're on the D drive, which is for me a separate SSD drive. And then I did a symbolic link, you know, on Linux it's ln-s. Uh, and what I do on PC, I installed a small program that when you right click, you can do pick link source and then right click. Once you've done that, right click, you can do drop as symbolic link. 
So it's called a hard link shell extension, something like this. So I can do a symbolic link on uh, Windows, but on Linux and Mac, it's very, uh, it's pretty much uh, the same. So now Darktable believes all the files are in the uh, default folder, although actually they are on a separate hard drive. Now you can also uh, give to the Darktable binary a parameter at launch to say, I want to move the cache folder onto a separate location so it doesn't use the default location which is a bit uh, weird on the Windows version. So you can do that with the binary and I suggest you read the manual because I'm not going to repeat the manual in this tutorial because there's no point for it but if you want to deep dive into all the parameters you can give to dark table binary well you'll be happy to know there is one for the cache but it's actually easier to say well I'm not going to give a parameter, I'm going to stay with the default folder and just make a symbolic link so I can uh, move my thumbnails with me if I want. So I could actually move my thumbnails on a separate hard drive, an external hard drive, so I can travel with all my catalog and, and all my thumbnails with me just uh, like I would do with Lightroom. It's just that with Lightroom, Lightroom will store all the thumbnails with the catalog, although Dartable is going to separate them. So I would say Lightroom is a bit more clever when it comes to thumbnails. First, because it generates all the thumbnails for me in the background. And second, because the previews, the thumbnails, are actually stored in the same folder as, they, as the catalog. So it is a bit more clever for me. Uh, now, I don't know what you think. I love Dartable, but I think this way, uh, the way it handles the, uh, the, the thumbnails is not really, um, it's not really uh, optimal. So yeah, I, I hope in the future they're going to fix that. But for now, with this tutorial, you know how to generate them automatically and you know where they are stored and how to move them around if you want to uh, move the default folder and not store the thumbnails on the hard drive, on the uh, system drive. So uh, that's pretty much for this tutorial. It's not very, um, there is no retouching or anything. It's just uh, give you some tips and tricks about the way Darktable works, uh, how it's going to help you to uh, store and catalog your files. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, make sure you drop down a like uh, on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe as well so you can be notified when I publish new videos. Uh, I publish videos weekly, uh, one in French, one in English. Um, they are on the Creative Cloud, they are on Darktable, they are on pretty much anything related to photography retouching. So if you're into photography retouching and digital photography, be sure to subscribe to my channel for new tutorials. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.